Motion causes friction. This is omnipresent in engineering and technology, whether in electric drives, railway systems, band conveyors, or linear drives. Everywhere, some kind of bearing is necessary to guide the moving parts on their track. Friction is the main reason why bearings wear out. Moreover, friction produces abrasion, which can be fatal in sensitive production fields such as microelectronics, where machines are operated in clean rooms. Otherwise, the most minute dust particles would immensely increase the scrap rate of chip production. Recently, magnetic bearings have become much more important. Electromagnets are able to transfer forces without contact, a fact which is exploited in many moving and rotating systems, such as the German levitation train named Transrapid. But expensive measurement and control technology are required in these systems to provide the necessary forces for the guidance within the magnetic bearings. This will become redundant if novel superconducting bearings are used. The first prototype of a superconducting levitation elevator comes from Saxony. It's been developed by the Institute for Solid State and Materials Research Dresden, the electric automation and drive engineering company Chemnitz, the Institute for Ventilation and Refrigeration Dresden, and the Handling, Automation and Precision Technology Company Dresden. The core of the superconducting bearing consists of bulk superconductors and a rail system made of conventional permanent magnets. The superconductors are able to trap the outer magnetic field, thereby fixing the given distance from the magnet and maintaining it without additional control. Each bearing of the superconducting elevator consists of six bulk superconductors. An impressive experiment has been designed to demonstrate how strong the forces are which hold the superconductor on the track. The superconductor is placed a few millimeters from a conventional permanent magnet and cooled down in this position using liquid nitrogen. Reaching the specific transition temperature of minus 183 degrees Celsius, the material loses its electrical resistance and becomes superconducting thereby trapping the magnetic flux of the outer field. Now we can remove the shim of a certain thickness which determines the distance. The superconductor has now memorized its position within the field of the rail and will maintain it. The superconductor is fixed in this distance and can move only along the magnetic rail, even when turning upside down. This effect is the basis of frictionless, self-stabilizing bearings with superconducting magnets. The superconductors are therefore embedded in a special refrigeration unit, the so-called cryostat, which works much like a thermos bottle. The outside surfaces of the superconductors are surrounded by a vacuum, while their inner surfaces are permanently cooled by liquid nitrogen. During the initial cooling down to the specific transition temperature, the distance between the superconductors and the magnetic rails is determined. As long as the temperature does not exceed the transition temperature, the whole moving unit, consisting of superconducting bearings, cryostat and loading area, remains anchored within the magnetic field of the rails without any contact. Because the configuration of the magnetic field does not change at any point along the rail, the cryostat as well moves only along the rail. The superconducting elevator is driven by four synchronously controlled linear motors which also work without any contact. Each of the linear motors consists of a coreless flat coil guided between two magnetic rails. The rails are composed of single magnets oriented alternately in north and south polarity. The interaction between the magnetic field and the current flow through the flat coils is controlled in such a way that all four drives move synchronously.
Even if the first functional model looks a bit complicated, it neatly demonstrates that frictionless guiding and conveyance systems are promising applications for superconducting magnets. Further development and fine-tuning are necessary, however, in finding solutions really applicable to reduce friction and abrasion in clean room environments. <laughs>